appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here uh, this evening. Uh, I think I'll say just to move on myself and get right into this thing. What I'd like to do, though, you had some great questions. I want to try and get all of them done. Okay. So uh, I'm Martin Sepulveda. I'm running for Congress in District 9 because it's my home. I live there. I live in the district. I was raised here. My family's been part of the community since the 1870s when they homesteaded 160 acres at Rural University in Tempe. I'm an, I'm an Arizona State graduate. I met my wife there. We raised our family in Chandler. I started my business there. I was elected twice, two non-consecutive terms in Chandler City Council. I'm a military guy. I enlisted in the Marine Corps when I was 17. I'm now 52. I'm a fan of the Navy Reserves. Uh, my assignment's with the Reserve SEAL Team in Coronado. I'm a combat vet. I'm a small business uh, owner. Uh, and I'm not a career politician. The reason I'm running for Congress is I believe that I've got the experience and the leadership and the courage to stand up to any president, any elected official who, who doesn't, quite frankly, want to abide by the Constitution. You think I'm playing the crowd? I'm not. Uh, I took my first oath of office when I was 17. Okay? I'm a combat vet. That's not a blood oath with me. I'm the proud father of a son who's a combat vet, both Iraq and Afghanistan. That blood oath is now a sacred oath. I mean, I take it seriously. So let's uh, let's get into questions. If you'd like to read the questions, I can answer them. Sounds great. Okay. All right. The basic one: What is the purpose of government? The purpose of our government is to recognize those rights uh, that we have by virtue of our humanity, God-given rights. Those rights that don't come as because of this government, any government. Uh, also, our government is supposed to protect us, keep us secure in these borders, keep us. Uh, protect us from all enemies, foreign and domestic, to ensure that we have a system that we're not encroached on, we're left alone. There's not too much government intervention, there's not too much private intervention, but we're left alone. And finally, that we're all treated equally, and we, have, we all have the same access to the process. And what is an unalienable right? What does it mean to infringe upon an unalienable right? An unalienable right is a God-given right. I think to infringe on an unalienable right, a good example is uh, the contraception component uh, in Obamacare. Uh, that's a very uh, firmly held belief with a lot of uh, Christians. And I think in the mandatory health care provision, that's in, if you want insurance, I guess that's part of the package. And I think that uh, I'm happy to see all the pushback with the various uh, religions on that. But that's definitely an encroachment on an uh, unalienable right. Thank you. <coughs> Is the Constitution relevant or important today? Absolutely. Why? Well, I think it's more relevant today. We've got uh, attempts to erode uh, what's given to us in the Constitution. Whether it's a UN mandate that talks about gun control in the United States, whether it's Obamacare that starts to encroach on the First Amendment right, how we believe and how we uh, share our beliefs or practice our beliefs with respect to contraceptions, uh, or maybe we don't believe in that, but it's being mandated. Absolutely. I think we have to know what our rights are. So it's very relevant today. Should the Second Amendment be modified? And if so, how? And should guns be registered? No. And no. That's what you know. No, okay. No, it's good. Um, is Social Security constitutional? Should it be voluntary? Should it be phased out? What do you think? Well, it's not constitutional. Social Security? Social Security is not constitutional. Uh, it, it could be voluntary. Uh, perhaps it should be voluntary. If the government wants to keep a government-run Social Security program, great. But there should also be a 401k, a thrift savings plan, uh, private option. What that does, it does a few things. What I like about it, it keeps the government-run program uh, in check with the free market. So it makes the government-run Social Security program, it has to compete. But the thing I like about uh, a private option is this. Congress can't take that money and use it for something else. It's not theirs. If they want to do that in the Social Security program like they've done before, great. Uh, those people want to keep their uh, money in a government-run program, great, they've got an option. But again, Congress can't grab, grab my private 401k or, or thrift saving plan and use it to balance the budget for whatever they, uh, they want to do. Thank you. Do you oppose or favor auditing the Federal Reserve System? Do you oppose or favor getting rid of the Fed? And is the Federal Reserve System constitutional? If so, where is it stated in the Constitution? Okay. Do you have, who has Twitter accounts here? Uh, I, was, I was happy to see that uh, it passed. Uh, 
327 votes for, the 90 vote against, who cares? Okay, it passed. Uh, it was gutsy uh, because they suspended the rules so it had to be better than two-thirds, it happened. So that's across the board. And so it's not constitutional. I think when the Fed is audited, when the light of day sh is, is able to shine on the Fed, we'll, we'll dismantle it. We'll do away with it. Uh, but again, the Federal Reserve is a private bank. Uh, whose interest may or may not be in line with what we have as Americans and our sovereignty and what has to happen moving forward. So again, uh, I believe that I'm glad it was audited. I'm glad it, it passed. Uh, I hope to see it go away uh, and, and uh, just replaced. Thank you. How do you feel about the United Nations? Do you approve of U.S. troops being under U.N. command? And do you think we should go to war to enforce a U.N. declaration? as we did under President George Bush for the Gulf War. I'm, I'm probably one of the very few candidates, certainly in this race uh, in Arizona, but probably across the board, has actually worked alongside the United Nations. When I was in the Coast War, guess what? They didn't work. We, we stood up a separate command because the UN failed. So I don't believe in the United Nations. Uh, they can't do, they can't accomplish any mission without any significant military mission or other types of mission without significant help from the United States. Uh, they're worthless. Uh, their goals, again, aren't in line with our goals. Many times, their goals uh, contradict what we have as stated in the national defense, national sovereignty, what's important to us. Uh, and so I would like to invite them to find another place to have a building outside the United States. <laughs> uh, we, we, we spend too much money, and, and I think many times the goals of the UN are contradicting to our goals as Americans. Do you mind if I interject a question on, on relation to your he, last He's one. the bouncer. Can you, can you write the question down and ask it afterwards? Well, it relates to that last question. No, yeah, I know. There's a kid. No, we in order. Because we have a lot of candidates to do it to them. So, so make a note and ask it afterwards. Okay, we'll be the first half. It's not. We probably don't want to hear it. Okay. Are there any UN treaties you agree with? For example, Kyoto Protocol? Law of the Sea Treaty, Rights of the Child, Agenda 21, please explain. No, no. Again, uh, those UN treaties and mandates, many of them are contradicted to, to our goals. Uh, you know, uh, Agenda 21, uh, out of the Rio Summit, okay, sustainability. It sounds, you know, uh, very, fairly innocuous, but it's not. It, it starts to tell us what the highest and best use of, of land is. We believe in land rights here, in our communities, you know, nationally, states. Uh, cities, towns, we don't need that. We need to be told that. Uh, the one thing, backing up, if I have an alibi here, uh, the UN, I think you asked a question about should we go to war. I mean, I firmly believe we'll get this, uh, you know, probably another question. We should never go to war without a declaration of war, whether it's a UN or not. In fact, if there's a UN resolution like the first Gulf War that, that took us in that war, okay, great. Let's have a declaration of war. What is your opinion of income tax? Do you believe that a fundamental right, such as the right to earn a living, cannot be taxed? Okay, let me take the first part of that. Uh, the income tax. Uh, Article 1, uh, Section 289 firmly establishes the right for Congress to raise uh, taxes. Uh, the 16th Amendment talks about it's the modern income tax. Okay, so it's firmly uh, imbued in our Constitution. Um, but what I think about it is it's way too complicated. And the, the Simpson Bowles plan uh, has got from six uh, categories down to three. I like that. Everyone should have skin in the game. I don't care how rich or poor you are, you should pay some federal income tax. Uh, the corporate tax side, uh, it's no secret that we're not competitive. That's why companies are choosing to go offshore because we're not competitive. That needs to be lowered as well, like 25%. Uh, I think what the Simpson Bowles plan, if we get down to Three, uh, three, three uh, brackets. I think it's. Uh, I agree with the nine to fifteen and twenty-four uh, percent. Again, I don't really understand the second part of that question because it's laid out uh, in Article One, Section Two Eight Nine, the right for Congress to have an income tax. Thank you. Number ten. Would you support a complete private medical option plan in contrast to Obamacare? Yes. Obamacare doesn't work. We said from day one. If the Supreme Court says that Obamacare is not unconstitutional, what doesn't change is this. We can't afford it. It was advertised as not a tax. Well, now we know it's a tax. Uh, what was also advertised about $800 million or billion dollars 
Uh, after all, the zones don't matter, do they? Uh, now it's twice that. It's over twice that. So we don't know what the cost is. So we do know it doesn't make sense. It's not a free market solution. It doesn't take a lot of consideration to be feasible or viable or cost effective. It needs to be thrown out. Thank you. Under what conditions would you vote to raise the debt ceiling? None. And number 12, as a congressman, really you would do that? You would not vote for the debt, uh, debt raise the debt ceiling in a situation like last August where the whole country was going to get shut down? Who says they're going to shut down? So you actually would not vote for it? I, I, I don't see, right now, I don't see any any uh, uh, scenario that I would vote to raise the debt ceiling. We, we've got to stop this craziness. We're spending too much. We're, gonna, and, we're getting this on tape in case you want. Hey, okay. <laughs> I've been shot at for real, so I can stand by what I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number 12. As a congressman, where in the Constitution do you get your authority from? In your opinion, what are the five most important of your 20 authorized powers? It's Article 1, Section 8. That's where you get the authority. Uh, and five, I'm going to five. So I can. Deal. Okay, I'm going to stick to the rules here, so let's maybe combine a few. Huh? I think regulate trade and commerce is important. Uh, to establish uh, naturalization and become a citizen, that's very important. Uh, I think the uh, right to establish lower courts, a lot of problems we have seem to be at the appellate district court, the, the Ninth Circuit Court is a great example. Congress has the right to do that, uh, and certainly the right to declare war. Uh, inherent the right to declare war, they have the authority and responsibility to maintain an army. Uh, maintain the Navy and actually stand up the militia when it's called for. So I think those are very, very important uh, responsibilities. Thank you. Number 13, will you require that Congress declare war before committing the URA answer to US, U.S. military intervention? And you approve of the undeclared wars we have been in for many years. What wars have we been justified in entering since World War II? Well, of course, uh, I want to see a very public debate on the five years of the war. Uh, whether I approve them or not, they happen. The last time we declared war was World War II. A Korea was a uh, UN resolution, as well as the first Gulf War, as were other uh, police actions. We need to get away from that. I mean, Congress needs to take their authority seriously and talk about if we want to go to war, if it's that important to go to war, a very public debate followed by a very specific declaration of war. And in that, in that, there's got to be a defined end state. The war on terror. I, I've been overseas for the past 10 years. Three tours in Iraq, one tour in Afghanistan. The war on terror, right? I can't tell you what that looks like or what that's supposed to look like at the end. I don't even know what it ends. So we can't have these rolling gun battles overseas. There's, there's, it's not the way to get business done. I nice to be agreed with sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, number 14. What is your opinion on military conscription? Again, it goes back to the formal declaration of war. If war is that important, I think the draft should not be off the table. Quite frankly, uh, I'll call them cowards. I think there's a lot of cowards in Congress. I think all they want is their job. Uh, if, if it is a national uh, importance and emergency to, to declare war, and part and parcel of that, there's a draft component. How quick do you think a lot of them will be not to declare war? That could be a deterrent. Uh, and I, I had a nice quote from General Washington, uh, but basically it's something towards the effect that the liberty we enjoy, the freedom we enjoy, we shouldn't uh, think that because of that we don't have to defend it. Number 15. Where are we? We've got like nine minutes left. Well, a couple minutes more than that. Okay. Before, before we start having people ask questions. Do you support the indefinite detention of U.S. citizens as stated in subsection 10.1? No. That's quick enough. <laughs> do you support federal subsidies? If you do, how does that align with your belief in free markets? I don't. I don't. Period. They need to be phased out. They're there, but they need to be phased out. And do you oppose or favor developing our natural resources such as domestic oil reserves? I, I favor that. 
uh, quite frankly, it's a revenue stream for the cities, or for the, cities the, the states. Uh, federal lands, state lands, it's within the border of Arizona. Okay? If we find significant gas and oil reserves, okay, you have exploration, capital investment, a few jobs, you find something, you've got now production, more capital investment, more jobs. Guess what? The, the money from those leases uh, can start being kicked in the state coffers. If it's federal land, then guess what? We'll give them a cut too. But it still stays here. And the second part of that, if we're going to develop these, these precious resources or fuel, you know, they're fossil fuel, I hate to tell you, we're going to be tied to fossil for quite some time, we're less dependent on, on the volatile Middle Eastern region. We need to do that now. And there is a, there is a revenue component to that as well. Thank you. Number 18, would you have signed the reauthorization of the Patriot Act? No. Mm. Not in favor of national ID as well. So let's uh, NDA. You read it. Up. Read it yeah. All right. Well, number 19. What should be done about illegal immigration? We, okay. Two things. A lot of the visas, a lot of the illegal immigrants here, they've overstayed their visas. We've got to track that better. The big issue we deal with is illegal immigration from Mexico. We've got to go to the source. To treat the to treat, to treat the symptoms is one thing. Let's go to the cause. Let's engage the government of Mexico, who's, who's exporting, whether knowing it or not, all the, these immigrants to our, to our country. But again, uh, illegal immigration, it's got to be a comprehensive approach. I think we have a great opportunity to engage this brand new president. This is a problem for you and us. If we do nothing as the United States, we don't engage that government of Mexico and the, and the, the international narco-terrorists, international human smugglers, and all those other nefarious characters topple that government, they become a failed state. We're less safe, not more safe. Conversely, if we help them achieve success, and they're able to normalize their, their, their economy, their country, commerce goes up, not down. Jobs created in Mexico and the United States. There's less illegal immigration because the opportunity is there. Plus, it's never a bad thing to, to uh, kill a few uh, narco-terrorists and, and get those human smugglers off the street, get drugs off the street. That's got to be a priority. Thank you. All right. Ed, would you pause for just a moment, please? Absolutely. Uh, is Mr. Adams here? Yes. Okay. Can we take five minutes? I think I let him go over time on this. Can we take five minutes to, for him to answer questions? We almost got done. Just keep, I think just keep going. Let's just get through the questions. And that comes a little faster. Yeah, we're, yes. we're getting yes or no answers. We're getting yes or no answers. I don't think the questions are allowing him to speak take in time. depth. I have a question. Uh, so you're do we, next. so vote. <laughs> Do you want to continue with the rest of the questions, yes. or do you want to take five minutes for questions from the audience? Oh, audience. 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 I think the question should, well. yeah. I think the question should be vocalized the first time with Martin Spoboda, and that's it. And they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be repeated again. Okay. Okay. Right. So let's ask some questions. All right. And you wanted to ask one earlier, so you're first. Uh, you're next. Thank you. My my question when we're talking about. Uh, you made the comment about the Federal Reserve System right. and that it should be replaced. Mm -hmm. What should you replace it with? I don't think it should be replaced with a private international bank. I mean, basically, uh, you know, I'm not sure that their uh, interests are always the same as ours. You, know? you say you don't think it should be replaced with one, or you do? I don't think it should be replaced with another private international right, thank bank. Thank you, because I misunderstood your yes. answer. Yeah. So what's the answer? Well, you know what, I, I think once this audit gets done, I'm going to figure out a lot of problems that they've had. I'm going to tell you, I probably, I'm not the smartest guy to answer what the answer is, but it's got to be free market. Whatever central banking system we, thank you, that we have, I think it really needs to ensure that our goals as Americans are being met. The sovereignty issue isn't in question. The, the, the world bank or the world markets aren't part of the, the, the ebb and flow of, of the interest rates. We shouldn't be tied to any of that. And I think that we are with the Federal Reserve. Thank you. The urban going to block that anyways. That's not my question. I think everybody in here probably would agree that if Bernanke continues just to print money and monetize the debt, and the politicians allow him to do this, it's unsustainable and the economy collapses, correct? Correct. Yes. If we stop them, the economy collapses like right now. That One of those days are coming. What are you going to do? You know, I'd rather take the, the sour pill right now. I'd rather do it right now than kick the can down the road. We've done well, what are you going to do? Well, okay, so it's going to be on. We we're seeing a police state. We've got drones. We've got we've got cops running all over the place. Uh, we're looking at the, the military maybe coming in here. So we've got a choice. Are we going to let? It, we're going to have a, a complete police state in this country, 
Will we allow anybody across the borders, and we're getting molested at the airports, or are we going to give our freedoms back? We're in a fire department, not a police department. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it, it's a serious issue. Yeah. But I think the Fed is probably embedded some of it. I'm not really so sure that they've always had the best interests of the United States in mind. Again, when, once it gets audited, I think we're going to figure out a lot of things have happened that haven't haven't served us. Okay, but now, but Jerry you're, Reed said he's going to block this. He already said it's it's over. He's not going to bring it up for vote. Well, we've got to keep. But you, you know what? Give up. I, you I, don't, I don't know. I'd like to say I think I learned a lot about you by listening to you answer these questions. I appreciate it, and uh, I like who you are. Um, Questions like this, we can talk all night on stuff like this. And our real goal, in my opinion, is to get to know who the candidate is. And uh, and so I'd like to move ahead and thank you very much, Mr. Spolder, yes. for coming to see us. One more question. One Okay, let's take one. The, the drug war. It sounded like, if I heard you right, that you're supporting the drug war. I support the drug war. I think you we, think we, you can we, be for free trade and yet stop we, drugs? Absolutely. Drugs, you drugs see hypocrisy in that trade. position? Absolutely not. Look, the government of Mexico needs to step up. We need to help them step up. If we do nothing and become a failed state, there's going to be more drugs, not less. Okay? We know that the narco terrorists are running rampant there. They're probably running rampant here. You know, when we see a, a major drug bust with a single drug cartel in Tempe, Arizona, okay, and we're, not, and we're more concerned about the Syrian, the free Syrian army, okay, something is askew in my mind. Okay, but the bottom line is we, we can't give up. Mm. Drugs aren't a good thing. Okay, mm. drugs are running a, a lot of, of, of Mexico. They're probably running a lot of the economy here too. We can't give up. We can't give up. And so I think engaging the government of Mexico, we've got we've got to say, hey, this is a problem. Human smuggling is a problem. Illegal, illegal immigration is a problem. We've got to go to the source and not just the symptoms. We want to we want to cure the problem. Thank you very much. I am glad you're running for office. I have one last question. Who are you running against? Who are the candidates you're running against? Okay, there's uh, Travis Grantham, Wendy Rogers. And these are Republicans? Republicans. We won't talk about okay. Democrats. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wendy Rogers, uh, Leah Campos Schonebauer, uh, Lisa Borowski, uh, and Jeff Thompson. I think I got all. There's seven Republicans running. Thank you. Forgot Vernon. Oh, I'm sorry. How could I forget that guy? <laughs> That's the other guy. Thanks. Thank you, Travis.